Take him down. Get down! <laughs> physics in movies. In most action movies and science fiction movies, physics is between unrealistic and unrealistic, somewhere between. There are exceptions, but most movies have it completely wrong or largely wrong. And as I mentioned in uh, my previous video in this playlist, Wonder Woman 1984, if they only hired few graduate students in the physics, atmospheric science, mathematics or engineering departments, they would have these things much, much better. But probably in their meetings, they are discussing how to pay overpaid actors and actresses even more instead of paying people that are actually doing science. And uh, these people are mostly graduate students. And uh, if you say science fiction, then there should be somebody dealing with science. But that's probably not priority in these meetings. And therefore, we end up with a movie where the protagonist is hiding between desk and there is a villain coming with AK-47 and the desk just happens to block the bullet. In real life situation, a bullet from AK-47 would go through desk, would go through the person and then would maybe even go through the wall behind that person. That's the power of high-caliber, high-speed bullet. As I will mention at the end of this video, I will also mention at the beginning. This topic is very serious and it should be taken seriously. The main goal of today's video is to show you how you can use physics and physical reasoning to give an approximate answer or approximations to real life questions, such as what is the bullet penetration through various materials. And today we will derive that, we will derive this theory for a generic material, and then at the end we will check few examples, and you can use these results to check your own examples, to plug in your own numbers. And also, as I mentioned later in the video, uh, I watched few videos on YouTube regarding, regarding shooting, where experts shoot through different materials and I recall from one of the videos a military expert from the United States actually said if you are unfortunate that a, uh, a person with a high caliber rifle enters your house and starts shooting very unfortunately but that's real life there is no cover that you can take that can save you that's the seriousness of uh, high caliber bullets. And that's also the level of inappropriateness in these movies, how they represent the power of a bullet and the bullet penetration through various materials. Let's address the subject physically. Here is the sketch of our problem. We have bullet that has velocity V impinging on a rigid target. The bullet is moving along the x-axis, and this is positive x-direction. x equals 0 will be the entrance point where the bullet interacts with the target, 
and at this point velocity of the bullet is initial velocity and we will call it v naught. What we want to find in this problem is the penetration depth of this bullet once it enters the target and we will call this penetration distance or penetration depth xm. When we have xm velocity is zero because bullet stopped moving. This bullet has cross section A that I try to indicate here with red. One of the main assumptions in this problem is that we are assuming that bullet is perfectly rigid and it doesn't deform as it is interacting and penetrating through the target. As almost always, we start by writing second Newton's law that says mass of the bullet times acceleration of the bullet is the sum of all forces that are acting on this bullet. But because everything is in one direction, one dimension, we can simply rewrite this in scalar form saying that mass of the bullet times acceleration in the x direction is the sum of all forces acting on the bullet in the x direction. Now let's list the forces that are acting on the bullet. Once the bullet hits the target, the strength of this material is the first factor that opposes bullet to go into the target. Now let's discuss three options that in principle can occur once the bullet hits the target. Let's say this is the target, this plank piece of wood that I used in one of my previous videos, link is in the description. And let's say, just for this case, my finger is the bullet. Now, if the bullet exerts pressure, which is force per area, that is below the elastic strength of this material, the bullet will just bounce off, like this. Nothing is happening to this material. Option number two is that the bullet exerts enough force to, to exceed the yield strength of this material. In that case, the material will break apart and we will have rupture. In other words, the bullet will not necessarily penetrate into the material, but will break it apart like this. In this particular case, my large muscles exerted enough force to exceed the yield strength of this wood and I broke this piece of wood apart. But this is also not the option that we are particularly interested in. We are interested in the option when the bullet penetrates into this material. So let's examine that further. To do that, I'll have this nail that I will uh, substitute to be a bullet and I have this piece of wood. Further, as always, I have hammer and I have this experimental platform. So here is, just to adjust my microphone here, so here is the piece of wood, here is the bullet in the form of nail, and here is the best equipment you can have, hammer. What is happening when the bullet hits the target and starts penetrating this target? Well, clearly bullet exerts pressure, just as I exert pressure uh, on this piece of wood. In order for bullet to go through this material, to go through the target, it needs to compress the material in front of it as well as on the sides of the bullet. And I can demonstrate that using this nail and hammer. As I am hammering this nail, what is happening here? I hope you can visualize that the nail 
as it is going into the material, is compressing the material inside, but it also compresses the material on the sides, laterally. And the pressure that needs to be exerted to compress material like this is called cavity pressure. And cavity pressure or cavity strength of the material is well-known quantity in geoengineering and drilling. And there is cavity expansion theory also. Now, quantifying this cavity pressure or cavity strength is very difficult. And this is not uh, a property of material that you that uh, manufacturers typically give you. They give you yield strength, for example, to break this material, but not necessarily uh, cavity strength to drill something into the material. If you don't know this value, then a first approximation can be that cavity strength is approximately three to five times yield strength of the material. I would like to emphasize here also that cavity strength, as well as the yield strength of the material, is not necessarily the same in all directions. It's sometimes easier to break material in this direction than in this direction. And you know that if you ever uh, cut trees. So when I was uh, in high school with my father, I, we would cut trees with uh, X. And, uh, you know, if it is difficult to, to cut uh, lumber in half, my father would tell me, well, rotate it or uh, try to find different angle because under different angles, it turns out that it's uh, more difficult or more easy to cut the lumber in half. And the same happens for the bullet. Of course, bullet traveling in one direction through the material is not necessarily exert, uh, experiencing the same resistance as it would if it is traveling in the other direction. Okay, so to, to conclude on this, the first resistance that the bullet uh, experiences is the cavity strength of the material because bullet needs to compress the material in front of it and on the sides in order to penetrate through this target. Now, let's quantify this. What we just discussed is the following. Pressure exerted by the bullet is force of the bullet divided by area. Therefore, force is pressure times area from this equation. And we said that the pressure needs to be equal to the cavity pressure of the material in order for bullet to penetrate and keep penetrating this target. Pressure needs to be equal at least cavity pressure for this bullet to compress the material in the target. Which means that the first force is C times A, where C is the cavity strength of this material. However, there is one more force exerted on the bullet as it is traveling through this material, and that is dynamic force, because bullet is a high-velocity projectile. Another force that we need to take into account is dynamic force, and this force is called drag force. I talked about it also in my video on Brownian motion of COVID-19 particles in the air. If you have a projectile that is going through a fluid at high speed, then there will be drag forces or aerodynamic forces acting on that object. You know that because when you drive car, there is drag force exerted on your car due to relative motion of the car through the air. And uh, you also know that at least intuitively because they say that uh, uh, racing cars are more aerodynamic than uh, SUVs, for example, and so on. So the aerodynamic force depends on, of course, on the fluid through which you are, uh, density of that fluid through which you are traveling, but it also depends on the shape of the object. So uh, drag force for a high velocity nail uh, going through the air is not the same as the drag force uh, for the high velocity piece of wood that would be traveling through the air and so on and so on. 
if the projectile has low velocity, then this dynamic force is really not important and you can just go with the pressure, cavity pressure exerted by the bullet. However, if the velocity of the bullet is extremely high and the medium is very porous, like air or water, then the first force, the pressure force, cavity strength of the material is negligible and you only need to consider this dynamic force. If you have material that is in between, and the classical example would be actually human flesh, human body. If you have high velocity bullet traveling through human body, then that body is more or less like a fluid through the bullet. And as we will see later, if you have AK-47 bullet going into your shoulder, then first of all, you're very unfortunate. And second of all, your flesh, as well as your bones and the, the, the entire shoulder is more or less like fluid for that bullet because bullet is so high speed and the uh, cavity strength of the human flesh compared to the force exerted by the bullet is so weak then basically dynamic forces are the dominant forces that we need to consider. At any rate, the second force that we need to include is the drag force, and now we will quantify it. The drag force is given by F is one half CD rho T A V squared. Let me circle this equation because that's the starting equation. Anyways, this is the drag force. This formula is empirical and it cannot be derived analytically. It follows from dimensional analysis and experiments. However, this is a well-known formula and uh, you put your trust in this formula any time you fly an airplane. Anyways, here CD is drag coefficient, which is a dimensionless parameter that quantifies the resistance that the fluid, in this case target material, exerts on the immersed bullet. Typically CD is about 1. Rho T is density of this material, A is cross-section of the bullet, and V is velocity of the bullet. So we see that dynamic force is proportional to the square of the velocity. Knowing the expression for these two forces, we go back to our equation for second Newton's law. And we write that mass times acceleration in the x direction, but that is dv dt is equal negative first force ca negative 1 over 2 second force cd rho t a v squared. Why negative? Well, negative because Remember, this is written for the bullet, and bullet is traveling in this direction, and both forces are acting against the bullet. They are acting in the opposite direction of the positive x-axis. Therefore, there are minuses. Rewriting the material derivative in terms of advection, we get that m v d v d x is equal negative CA minus 1 over 2 CD rho T A V squared or M V D V D X I will move this to the left side plus 1 over 2 and this is ordinary differential equation that we end up with. This is a nasty differential equation that we now need to solve. It is nasty because it is nonlinear differential equation, and this nonlinear differential equation is known as Bernoulli's differential equation. And in fact, it is one of few nonlinear differential equations that mankind actually knows how to solve. Most of differential equations we don't know how to solve. 
in order to make this video reasonably short, I will give the solution right away. However, I made a separate video and I published it together with this video where I show how to solve this equation step by step. That being said, using these boundary conditions over here, the solution of this equation is v of x is equal. This mess is the solution of this differential equation given these initial conditions. But we are still not at the end because the goal is to find xm and not v of x. v of x is how the velocity changes in the x direction as the bullet is traveling through the target. But we want to find the maximum distance that the bullet will reach. Now we can get that from this boundary condition. We know that x is equal xm when velocity is equal to zero. And that's exactly what we will use here. So we write zero is equal square root 1 over 2 a, but instead of x, now we have xm, xm divided by m. Now multiplying this equation with uh, denominator and squaring it, we get that e. Now I will invert this equation and take natural logarithm. This will give me cd, clearly I can cancel these areas, a, and finally we can solve for xm to get xm is equal, and this is how deep the bullet will penetrate into the target. Let us now look at one interesting example. I used this formula to estimate how deep a bullet from Kalashnikov AK-47 would penetrate into a wooden plank. So the bullet mass is given, bullet muzzle velocity is around 730 meters per second, Therefore, here we are assuming that the target is very, very close to the rifle. Bullet cross-sectional area, drag coefficient, as I said, is usually around 1. Wood cavity strength, uh, this is very difficult to find and estimate, but I found for North American Northern Red Oak to be about this value. And plugging these numbers into our equation gives the penetration distance xm of 0 0.4 meters. And 0 0.4 meters is a lot, you will agree. Therefore, a simple wooden table would not be able to stop bullet 762 from Kalashnikov AK-47. Here, I also plotted a nice graph, we have penetration distance as a function of bullet muzzle velocity. So here we looked into particular value of 730 uh, meters per second, but here is a range of velocities and you see this nonlinear relationship between penetration distance and bullet muzzle velocity. When velocity is zero, there is no penetration. Well, that sounds pretty good. And as velocity increases, penetration distance increases, but you can see the functional dependency is non-linear. The main purpose of this video was to show you the power of physical reasoning and how you can use physics, mathematics, engineering to approximate or at least get approximate answers to some of the real questions that you can ask uh, in, in everyday life, such as the bullet penetration through a target. Now at the end of this video I would also like to share with you a personal story. As some of you may know from my previous videos, I grew up in war. In the 1990s there was war in ex-Yugoslavia and I was in my elementary school. Being elementary school student, little kid, I was of course not at first lines or anything like that. I was, I lived in various villages 
but all of these villages were along the war zone. And uh, in one of the villages where we lived for about two, two and a half years, there was a man that unfortunately got shot by the AK-47 in his shin bone. Now, of course, I wasn't there when uh, that happened, but I can tell you the recovery process as uh, I saw it with my own eyes for about two years. The point is, for these two, two and a half years, that poor man never recovered. The bullet penetrated uh, through his leg. It went through the shin bone, went to the back of the leg. And uh, for these two, approximately two years, he never recovered. He had multiple surgeries. He had these, I don't know the English word, but those uh, rods that they put, stabilizers or something like that, that they put in your leg. He was never able to step on that leg. He never fully recovered. Now, my assumption knowing physics today is that the major damage was caused by dynamic forces. And I suggest after watching this video, you actually go to YouTube and watch uh, uh, real videos of people shooting target with high caliber uh, guns, such as AK-47, and you will see what happens. What happens is namely the following. Where the bullet enters the target, in this case the leg of this poor man, you have very small hole, which is approximately the diameter of the bullet. And you might think then naively, well, okay, the same happens throughout the flesh and the bone, or uh, throughout the target, but that's not the case. When the bullet penetrates the target, then dynamic forces that we talked about take over and uh, the range of dynamic force, the drag force exerted by the bullet is much, much larger than the diameter of the bullet and the damage caused by the bullet is uh, way, way bigger than the diameter or radius of uh, that bullet. And therefore, when the bullet hits flesh, the damage is much, much bigger than uh, the size of the bullet. Another problem in movies that I see, also just to finish this story, after two years we moved away from that village. I don't know what happened with that poor man, but uh, hopefully he recovered. That was many years ago, but for these approximately two years, he was constantly in hospital surgeries and trying to heal from that wound. Following to that story, another uh, horrible, horrible interpretation of uh, bullet wounds in movies is when they tell you, oh, it didn't hit the bone, so you're fine. Now, of course, if it didn't hit the bone, it's better than if penetrated your bone. But I will just repeat what I said. If you have high caliber bullet, in particular shoot from a close distance, going through your flesh, the dynamic forces will destroy that muscle. It can happen, they destroy the muscle beyond recovery. So if that happens to your biceps, it might be that you will never be able to use your biceps. I mean, human body is amazing, it recovers uh, enormously, but it definitely doesn't recover like in movies in two days, where they tell you, oh, it just went through the flesh. And they indeed imagine that the bullet is this nail, and if I pierce this nail through my uh, bicep, let's say, then the only force, because this is now a low velocity projectile, the only force is this business related to cavity pressure and so on. But in the case of bullet, you have uh, high velocities and therefore dynamic forces take uh, over. To conclude this video, I, would, uh, I watched a few of uh, shooting videos on YouTube. I like to watch that. And uh, uh, I saw in one video, one military expert uh, in the US said something like this. If a person enters your house and has high caliber rifle, such as AK-47, for example, that I talked about, there is no cover that you can take in your house that can save you. AK-47 or similar high caliber, high velocity rifles will go through the wall, will go through the table, desk, kitchen, uh, couch, sofa, anything. Even if you have bulletproof vest, bulletproof vest means nothing 
for high caliber bullets uh, at close proximity. It means a lot if you are 300, 500 meters away from the uh, gun. But if you are very close, it means nothing. And the best way to conclude the video is to quote the great, great physics professor, Dick Solomon. Oh, it's not all glamour, kids, but it's mostly glamour. <laughs> oh, and, uh, guns. <laughs> and what makes that policeman's gun so cool? Physics! Kinetic energy generates the velocity with which the bullet exits the barrel, while the ballistic coefficient and sectional density determines the damage to its targets. Guns don't kill people, physics kills people! <laughs>